two, one. So latent heat examples. Here's a little diagram before I jump into these examples. So latent heat is nothing else but the actual energy which allows you to change state. So you're gonna be changing state either from a solid, so you see that on the left there as a cube, to let's say a liquid, so that would be melting or fusion. You can be changing state from a liquid, okay, going to a gas, which is called typically vaporization, and then you can go in reverse. So you can go from a gas and change into a liquid, which would be condensation, and then you can be freezing um, back from a liquid to a solid. Now, sometimes it does happen that you jump from a solid to a gas, uh, especially on the exterior, okay? So sometimes you'll get enough energy that some of the smaller particles will escape into a gas. So going from a solid to a gas, that would be called sublimation. And then if you're going from a gas, and sometimes you'll kind of uh, crystallize in a sense, okay? So that is kind of a deposition in a sense where you're going from a gas to a solid. Now, when you're studying physics, you rarely, especially in the introductory side, uh, will hear about sublimation and deposition. And sublimation sometimes is used for both, okay? Going from a solid to a gas and then gas uh, to a solid. And I certainly make that mistake and I use it for both um, because I sometimes forget about the special term called deposition. But if you remember sublimation, I think it would be good enough now, within the physics foundations, you typically will concentrate and kind of remove these sublimations and depositions, and then you're going to be calculating the latent heat, uh, which is the amount of energy that you need to actually change your state. And that's typically from solid to liquid or from liquid to a gas and vice versa. So you're going to be kind of stuck okay, in this world where you're going to be calculating this or this and that latent heat will have a specific kind of latent um, heat of fusion. So that's what it's gonna be called and it's utilized with a little L, okay? And sometimes it'll be L with an F, okay? Kind of for fusion and it's used for both, okay? In this case. Um, and you may be calculating the latent heat and then you'll be kind of looking for the specific latent heat, okay? Of the vaporization and that's gonna be in these kind of changes. Now, please remember that the temperature does not change here at all, okay? So the temperature kind of stays steady, right? Uh, because we're utilizing the energy to change the state. Now, if you wanna hear a little bit more, okay, I'll put up a link up above there to change of state and latent heat, kind of the introduction. Here, I just wanted to give you this diagram before I start jumping into the actual problems. Now, the equation that we utilize to calculate our heat, so heat, which is Q, in these changes of state is very simple. So it is simply how much mass do you have of the substance, and then you need to know what the actual specific uh, latent heat is. Now, the specific latent heat is kind of very similar to what you have been learning with the specific heat capacity. You can put up a, a link up above there, but I will be using here both of them. Um, to kind of complicate an example. The first one may not be as complicated, but the second one will introduce both. So let's jump into the examples and let's try to see how we can utilize this kind of equation, uh, which calculates for us what the actual heat transfer would be. So here's example number one. So in a laboratory setting, you observe 988 grams of an unknown substance uh, vaporize in 15 minutes under heat. So if it's vaporizing, so if, I, if you scroll back up here, so that means it is going from a liquid, okay? And then it's going into a gas. So here's your vaporization. So that's what happens in 15 minutes, okay? To this particular unknown substance. So I'm gonna just write down here for us. So we have our mass, which is equal to 988 grams. So I'll keep that. Now, if we were, if we will need, we can always change this to kilograms. So I will see what we will be working with or if it matters. Okay, so here, this is what we have. And now, okay, so next it says, if it has been measured that uh, 4.05 times 10 to the six joules of heat has been needed for the process. So that means to vaporize this whole thing, so to vaporize all of this, we needed this much energy, right? So that's much heat. So that's 
our Q. This is going to be 4.05 times 10. Okay, this is to the 6. Now, this is in joules. Now, it asks us what is the latent heat of the substance. All right, so now the latent heat okay, of the substance. So here's they're referring to the specific okay, latent heat of the substance. So if you're thinking back of the formula, it's going to be Q, which is equal to the mass times the L, which is going to be your specific latent heat. Now, in this case, it's of vaporization because that's what we're exactly doing. So it doesn't really matter which one we plug in, if it's in grams or in kilograms, okay? We just have to watch out for the units. They do not specify here what the units should be, all right? So substituting all of this in, I'm going to get 4.05 times 10 to the 6 joules is equal to the mass. I'll keep it in kilograms because we typically may want to be able to use um, standard SI units. And then we can find out what our L is. So we're basically solving for this. So not very difficult. We can just take and divide both sides by 0 0.988. And we're going to get exactly what our L is. So L is going to be equal to, and this is going to be 4.05 times 10 to the 6 joules. I'll keep the units just so that it's a reminder for us. And then this is going to be in kilograms. So notice we're going to have joules per kilogram, which indeed would have been our standard um, unit for the latent uh, heat. All right. So here it is. Let me just plug it all back in. So 4.05. Okay. And so times 10 to the 6. So that's going to be that. And all of this is going to be equal to, so that's a pretty big number. And that we're going to be dividing by 0 0.9. 8, 8. And that is going to give us four. I'm going to keep it in scientific notation. I'll keep it to three kind of significant figures here. And we're going to have zero, I guess, one zero times 10. And that's going to be indeed to the six. All right. And that's going to be joules per kilogram. All right. So there you have it. And you should be comfortable in going back and forth in scientific notation as needed. I can put up a link up above there to scientific notation, okay, as a reminder, okay, in terms of kind of three significant figures um, for rounding. So there you have it, okay. So that's what your answer will be. If you need to round it to something else that your teachers ask you to, you can certainly do that. All right. So let's start on this second one. So we have 1.2 kilograms of ice, all right, at zero degrees Celsius, and it needs to be fully melted. Okay, so before I even jump in further, let me just kind of illustrate this. So we have 1.2 kilograms, so that's the mass, okay, this is of ice, and we want to be able to melt this. So that's what it says. Now notice that this particular ice is at zero degrees okay so that would have been my initial temperature that i have now what is the amount of heat needed in order to melt and then bring the water temperature um, to a temperature of 65 degrees celsius okay so we want to kind of do two things we want to melt this first and then after we melt it all right we want to bring it up to uh, temperature of 65 degrees Celsius. So notice that would have been a change in temperature of 65 degrees Celsius because you're going from zero. And now the melting component, so that's going to be the concept of the latent heat. And then this component, which is bringing up the temperature right here, well, we're going to need kind of the specific heat capacity for that. So it's kind of a two step process in here. So I'm going to label this. So this is going to be my step number one. And then this is going to be my step number two, if this is what we want to be able to do. All right. So what else do they give us? So we have our mass. So that mass is right there. Um, they give us, assume that the specific latent heat of fusion, all right. So that is, so latent heat of fusion is equal to, so I'll put a little F for fusion. This is the same thing in melting, which is 334 joules. Um, this is per gram. Okay, so we're going to have to be careful here because this one is per gram and not per kilogram. All right, although we can certainly change that, but I'll worry about that in a moment. The specific heat capacity, so that would have been C, 
is 4184. This is joules per, well, this one is in kilograms, okay, per degree Celsius. All right, so this is kind of annoying because you have everything is a little bit different. Okay, so to make it consistent, I'm going to just change. So let me kind of change this. I know that 1000 grams, right, is equal to one kilogram. So I'm going to just change this. Okay, I'll get rid of this. And then that particular specific latent heat of fusion okay, is going to be if I multiply it. So this is going to be three, three, four, and we need quite a few zeros in here, but that's fine. At least this way, everything is in kilograms right there. So there you have it. All right. So let's jump in. So number one, Okay, we need the melting, all right? So how much heat would we need for melting? So Q, um, and this, I'm gonna put a little one here for step number one. Now, this is just mass multiplied by your latent heat. So that's the formula. Everything has to be consistent, and it is now, because now this one is in kilograms. So let's multiply this through. So that's actually gonna be quite a lot of energy in here and I can find out exactly what this is. So 1.2 times 334, one, two, three. All right, so this is 400,800 joules. That's step number one. So this would basically just melt all of this. So now we would be, okay, still basically at zero degrees, but now we would be in a liquid. And now we wanna be able to increase the temperature by 65 degrees. So that's kind of step number two, right? So this is now the change in temperature, which we wanna increase it by 65 degrees. So again, we need our Q. I'm gonna put a little two in here, but I can't use the same formula. I have to use the formula for the specific heat capacity, which is mass times specific heat, and then the change in temperature. So this is now 1.2, we're assuming you know, nothing has evaporated or gone somewhere else, so we still have exactly the same amount of mass. Um, the specific heat capacity, which is 4184, this is per kilogram, and this is 65 degrees that it will change. So let's see what that is. So 1.2 times, this is 4184, and then times is 65. This is going to be three, two, six, three, five, two joules. And now all we have to do is we have to now take these. So take this one and this one, add it together. All right. So I already have one in the calculator. So I'll put the other one and that will be that. So the total, okay, so I'll put here total, which is equal to seven, two, seven, one, five, two. Okay. And that is just simply Q1 plus Q2, you know, you can read, let your teachers know. Now, if you want to round this, you certainly can. I know that, you know, if you take a look here at the significant figures, you can see how many that you've had to start with. Um, you know, we started with 1.2 kilograms, okay? The change in temperature was 65. That's two, two sig figs, two sig figs. The specific um, latent heat capacities, we'll assume those are constant, okay? But they do have actually more. So this, you know, you can round this okay, if you wanted to. And that that's what it would have been. This is two significant figures right there. All right, so that's a great question because it allows you to kind of mix together exactly what happens, both change of state and then increase in temperature. So remember, changing state is uh, pretty much all potential energy, right? So in this case, you're kind of breaking down the bonds, okay? In some particular way or adjusting the bonds so that it can become a liquid. And then it's the kinetic energy that gets typically added because temperature, remember, is the average kinetic energy of those uh, particles vibrating within this liquid. All right, so that's what you're changing around. Okay, so that is it for those examples and this particular kind of little short introduction to latent heat or at least a summary of it so that you can have it okay, as a viewpoint. Thanks for watching, see you in a future video. Bye everybody.